today we're going to talk a little bit about the plant cell and the structures inside called the organelles. So if you see here we have a pretty much of an overview of the organelles and the entirety of the plant cell. Notice the overall general color has green due to the chloroplast, which we'll talk about in a minute. And you notice the rectangular or boxy shaped structure. That's going to tell you that it's a plant cell, as opposed to an animal cell, which has more of a rounded structure or an ambiguous shape at times. Let's go through some of the organelles. So the first organelle that we're going to encounter with a plant cell, you would need to travel through the cell wall. Now you can notice that the cell wall has a pretty intricate structure to it. The cell wall has some proteins that interlink inside of it, which are called glycan, and it also has myofibrils and pectin. They're all proteins that help to give it some structure. But a good portion of the cell wall is actually made up of cellulose. Cellulose is a complex carbohydrate, and that complex carbohydrate really helps to give it its rigid structure to give the plant cell its support so that it can stand upright and give it that nice hard shape. Just inside of the cell wall, we have our plasma membrane or cell membrane. Now, all living organisms have cell membranes, and the cell membrane is essentially made up of multiple parts. It's made up of phospholipids, which are hydrophobic, which means they're afraid of or do not like to go near water. And then we also have our hydrophilic region, which does like water. Those are made up of proteins interspersed into the membrane. We also have some carbohydrates that give us some markers. And you notice these proteins can give us some channels for things to transport through. So we can get larger molecules through the cell membrane. As we travel through, if you look back at our main diagram here, we have our cytoplasm. The cytoplasm is that fluid structure that basically fills the entire inside of the cell and holds the rest of our organelles that we're going to talk about. One of the other organelles that you'll typically see in a plant cell is the mitochondria. Now before we go through the mitochondria too much, let's talk about its paired structure, the chloroplast. In order for the plant to be able to get its energy, it needs to harness that energy from the sunlight, and that's the job of the chloroplast. Chloroplast is what gives the plant its green structure. Now this is a membrane-bound organelle. It has an outer and an inner membrane, and it also has some stacked structures in, inside called the grana. Those stacked membranes are called thylakoid membranes. And then we also have a fluid stroma that fills the chloroplast. The chloroplast does the job of actually taking the sunlight and using the energy from the sunlight and transforming it into a chemical energy that the plant can use. Typically, most plants are going to make some sort of a sugar for themselves, which they then can transfer that sugar to the mitochondria. The mitochondria is then going to take that sugar. Notice this is also a membrane-bound organelle, and it has this inner folded membrane called, membrane called the cristae, and then it also has a fluid-like structure inside called the matrix. The mitochondria is going to take the sugar that was made during photosynthesis in the chloroplast, and it's going to turn it into ATP, which is an energy that the plant cell can use. All organisms are going to take the energy that they either create for themselves through photosynthesis or that they take in during feeding and turn it into an energy source that's more efficient for the cell to use. Along with the mitochondria, we have the nucleus. Now, plant cells are called eukaryotic cells, which means that they have a nucleus and they have membrane-bound organelles. They're a little bit more complex than the prokaryotic cells. Now this membrane-bound nucleus, you can see, has several parts. It has the membrane surrounding it, which sometimes we call the nuclear membrane or nuclear envelope. It has pores so that things can come into and out of the nucleus. And then it has the DNA located inside, and it has a nucleolus. The nucleolus is going to help it to make messenger RNA. So the nucleus really houses our genetic 
components. If you were a prokaryotic organism and didn't have a membrane-bound nucleus, your DNA would be kind of floating around inside the cytoplasm of the cell. So in order for that message from the DNA to get out, it's housed inside the nucleus, it needs to send messages through these nuclear pores, which we'll talk about a little bit later on. You'll notice that the nucleus is surrounded by a structure, an organelle called the endoplasmic reticulum. We'll talk about that now. The endoplasmic reticulum is really a set of transport channels, and the messages that are sent through the nucleus can go through the endoplasmic reticulum and get transported throughout the cell. Notice that this is called rough ER and it has things called ribosomes on the surface. The ribosomes are where protein synthesis takes place, which when we talk about genetics you'll see that this is pretty integral to the function of DNA because DNA helps to direct protein synthesis. So Overall we got through the majority of the organelles for our plant cell. We went through our cell wall, which is the outer structure, very rigid, mostly made of cellulose, which is a carbohydrate. Just inside the cell wall is a cell membrane, just like all cells have. Inside we have cytoplasm, which fills the space, houses the organelles, a lot of chemical reactions take place. We also talked about the chloroplast. We talked about the mitochondria, and we have one more cell structure that we're going to talk about, and that is the vacuole. All plant cells have a central vacuole, and that central vacuole is there to house water. That water inside the central vacuole helps to give what's called turgor pressure, and that allows the plant cell to hold its shape and not collapse on itself. When a plant has been watered and has obtained enough water from the outer surroundings, that central vacuole will be full and it'll help the plant to stand upright. If you haven't watered your plant in a while, that central vacuole will be not full, and it won't give as much pressure on the cell wall, and that cell can collapse on itself, which would cause the plant to wilt. This is a structure that animal cells don't have. Another structure that animal cells don't have, that plant cells have, are that chloroplast. Remember we said the chloroplast is what gives the plant its green shape, or green color, I should say. Um, and you notice that the organelles are spread throughout the cell. The vacuole is typically a little bit more towards the center, fills up a good portion of the cell. The chloroplasts are spread throughout, but typically tend to get pushed more towards along the inner part of the cell membrane. And the nucleus usually gets kind of pushed off to the side as well.